The two-plus years of the COVID-19 pandemic resulted in loss. Certainly the loss of lives comes to mind first, as it well should, but the level of loss brought more with it that I guess you could really say was maybe even more widespread. That's what my next guest looks at with her new book, The Shutting Down, The Limitations, Eliminations, Delays, Other Mandates Brought About by COVID. She says we'll have both immediate challenges to overcome as well as long-term impact that needs to be prepared for when it comes to our children. Her book is The Stolen Year, How COVID Changed Children's Lives and Where We Go Now. She's been an education correspondent with NPR. Also had her work appear in the New York Times, Washington Post, and other outlets. Today, her projects include a kids' climate podcast for Nickelodeon's Noggin. Anya Kamenetz, how are you today, Anya? I'm doing well, Chris. How are you? Great to have you here with a, a book that is much needed, and we'll get into this very rapidly. AnyaKamenetz.net, we have the link over at our page as well. With a story or stories like you present in, in The Stolen Year, as an, as an author slash reporter, you start off with a belief and start exploring. How did that exploration, did it expand your belief and what you were working with, or did you wind up getting redirected in some way? Oh, that's such an interesting question. You know, I chose five families from around the country to follow through the first pandemic year, and in some ways they also chose me. And, you know, I couldn't know exactly what was going to happen to them, and of course they all followed diverse paths. I think there's one thing that the families led me to make sure that I incorporated and acknowledged, and that is as difficult as this year was, and I believe unnecessarily for families, they always found their own meaning and purpose and love and being together. And that was something that they, they really held close, even as, you know, things got very difficult. Whenever we've been talking about COVID, we, we get into the, the medical and the political. You, you mm-hmm. bring the, the human element to it. Do you think that your book really is, I mean, people are, want answers, but is it more important to understand first and that's the only way we're, we're going to get to the answers? That is really what I think, yes. I think we need to take a, just a good hard look at what happened and, and try to think about the situations of people that are different from you and had a different situation, maybe a harder situation. The pandemic drove us, so many of us home, into our houses where we didn't have contact with other people that were different from us. And so in reading the book, I'm really hoping that you can think about what this was like for people, you know, maybe all across the country. And with that sampling of people that you present in the stolen year, would you say these people are more disappointed, frustrated, or hopeful? Hmm. Um, I think there are moments of all three. You know, I spoke to these families um, during the Black Lives Matter uprisings of 2020, during the um, insurrection, um, which one of my mothers experienced uh, basically firsthand. I mean, she got an alert on her phone that there was a civil uprising in her home in D.C. She had to rush and pick up her child from child care because she didn't know what was going to be happening on the streets of D.C. So it was very real. Um, but obviously, hope is something that we all strive for. And I think for people raising children in particular, it's almost necessary. One of the stories, too, you brought forward, too, really gives both sides of the equation. A, a doctor who's a mother who had to send her kids away because of what her job was putting her at, at exposure to. Yeah, Dr. Derek Haas, um, who contracted COVID in the very early weeks of the pandemic, just after she'd sent her children, her three children, to quarantine with her parents um, in the suburbs. And so um, there she was kind of with this virus that nobody really knew much about. She lost her sense of taste and smell. And she she was home quarantining, and then she went back and was really in the thick of things, you know, seeing how bad it got. And that really shaped her approach for the rest of the pandemic, trying to ensure not only that her own kids were safe, but also that her community got the resources and information that they needed. So with Anya Kamenetz, her book, The Stolen Year, How COVID Changed Children's Lives and Where We Go Now, AnyaKamenetz.net is her website. We've linked to it on our page as well, and you're listening to Issues and Ideas. The, the structure of your book, you start every chapter, every section off with a quote from Donald Trump, and I know you, this is not a political book for you listening, but I guess if you want to present the the pinnacle of denial, that's there's your benchmark right there. But <laughs> but to be fair, and this is what you do write about, we had extended periods of time for school closings, which you make the argument, as do many of the parents in, in your book, that were unnecessary. And that falls on really both sides of the political spectrum because you also had, I'm thinking specifically, 
the teacher unions in California, for example, who said they wouldn't go back into the classroom until this got done. That got done. We're not going to go back until this gets done. They stretched that out over and over and over again. So the, mm-hmm. the blame really falls on both sides of the political spectrum in so many different ways. There's no question that blame falls on both sides of the political spectrum. And, you know, what I was trying to invoke with those Trump quotes was really the sense of dislocation from reality that we oftentimes experience from our leadership, which made it so, so hard to know who to trust. And if I blame anyone for the fracturing of our, you know, our public consensus, I really... I think it, it, it really begins with this idea, this refusal to accept reality, you know, and, and within the absence of, you know, countries that were able to reopen beginning in the spring and certainly well into the fall of 2020 had a national consensus on the approach to the pandemic, and that's what we were missing here. We've talked about it here on the show a lot, too, the, the learning loss and the long-term impact. It's, I mean, personally, my fear is we're as an as a maybe not such a long term result, it might it might be an impact sooner versus later. First year of college might become the thirteenth grade with the deficiencies that kids are going to enter that freshman year of college with. That's right. So we've already seen a historic and really concerning downturn in college enrollment, um, and, it, and it did not recover this past fall. Um, we're still seeing drops, and there is also a downturn in. Um, K through 12 enrollment, particularly in blue states and districts that stayed open longer, that downturn has persisted. So, you know, the kids who stay in school, they will eventually catch up. I really am concerned about the kids who leave. Although some would say as proponents of homeschooling that maybe the pandemic proved that in some cases that's that's a better way. The parents maybe are more capable of with especially now with the assets that are available for parents who choose homeschooling, the organized efforts as well, that might be a better route for many kids. Uh, yeah, homeschooling has spiked, and particularly among families of color, which is a notable development. And you know, I don't fault any family for choosing the solution that works best for their child, but on a community level. It's worrisome because our public schools really are the bedrock of where we form a democracy and how we try to come together despite our differences. And if they are consistently losing students, they're not going to be able to be that robust um, place for democracy building and, and also for building our society and economy. Did, with the people that you spoke with, the situation, circumstances you came across, did COVID create that or did it expand the flaws, the breaks, the faults in the system that already existed but just really were widened because they were just ignored and then put to unforeseen stresses when COVID broke out? I really think it's a combination of both. COVID obviously exposed underlying inequities in society, but it also made them worse. As an end result with these stories and the voices that you present, What's your hope when someone reads The Stolen Year, how COVID changed children's lives and where we go now? Because you can always hear a story and react to it. But then I I use the analogy often when you're driving in the snow and your car goes into a slide, you've got to now catch up to that problem before something really bad is going to happen. That's sort Mm -hmm. of the situation we have right now. I think that's exactly right. I mean, I hope that people obviously gain empathy through hearing these stories and also feel a sense of urgency for recovery, not only for their own kids, but hopefully for children in your community as well who may not have the same resources. I think we need to um, make sure that we're holding our schools accountable for redressing um, these issues with learning as well as the social development. We have to remember that the mental health of our kids is a community-wide concern. And, and I mean, there's there's horrific examples that point that up. Whenever there is a mass shooting and there's these 18-year-old kids with guns, you know, mental health is a really big part of that picture. And so we all have a lot of reason to be um, interested in how our children are faring. We often think about, for you listening, what we've heard, maybe the, the most common element of the pandemic shutdowns for schools that you might be able to attach yourself to was the, the lack of high-speed internet. Well, what uh, what Anya writes about is how much further beyond that it goes to from uh, school lunches to vaccination, special ed, social issues. There is a society that exists within a school that those kids were, were bereft of for for way much longer than, than was necessary. And the, the voices that Anya presents, they're not the politicians, they're not the ones distant from the problem. They were the ones dealing with the day-to-day situations that the COVID-19 pandemic created. It's a fantastic human book that is going to, I think, be a wake-up call for a lot of people that 
Need one that's very loud. The Stolen Year, How COVID Changed Children's Lives. And where we go now, AnyaKamenetz.net. Anya, thanks so much for bringing the, these important stories and lessons that the, the voices bring. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for your attention and time on this, Chris.